afternoon. On behalf of uh, the Heinz family and his church family, all those that love him, thank you for being here to remember uh, such a special person to all of us uh, who knew how to light up a room when he walked into it, who brought uh, such joy to all those that he encountered. And so we're here to celebrate and remember the life of John Hines uh, this evening. So let us uh, start with a word of prayer. Dear gracious Heavenly Father, today we come to you for strength, for hope, for guidance during this time of grief and loss uh, for those that love such a special person who had such a great light on this earth. And God, we thank you for the years that we've had to spend with him, for some that were long, for some that were short, but we thank you for the gift that he was to many of us. We thank you for the gift of his life, the gift of his smile and the spirit that he had about him. So today, God, we just invite your presence to come into this place. We invite your Holy Spirit, the Comforter, to come comfort us, to come strengthen us. And we ask for your joy, God, and that joy that John had for life, for the passions and the things that he loved. God, we just ask that that joy would be present among us today as we remember such a great friend and great brother to so many of us. In your name we pray, amen. amen. I'm gonna invite Minister Victor to come up and share a reading of an Old Testament and New Testament scripture. Amen. God is our refuge and strength, an ever-present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear Though the earth give way and the mountains fell, fall into the heart of the sea, though its waters roar and foam and the mountains quake and their, with their surging, there is a river whose streams make glad the city of God, the holy place where the Most High dwells. God is within her, but she will not fall. God would help her at break of day. Do not let your hearts be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. My Father's house has many rooms. If that were not so, would I not have told you that I am going there to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, Take you to be with me, that you may also be where I am. You know the way to the place where I am going. Thomas said to him, Lord, you don't know where you are going, so how can we know the way?
Thank you, Elizabeth. Anybody that knew John knew that uh, he always had this smile about him when he saw him. And he sometimes wondered, what is John up to with that smile? And uh, with such a good heart, good nature, and his love for people. And uh, I, got to, I got to know him over this uh, last couple of years as I came back to the church and became the executive pastor. Uh, but we always would grab, have conversations after church. And it was just amazing to see his, uh, you always felt good after you talked with John. Yeah. You always felt encouraged after you talked with John. You always felt uplifted after you talked with John because his care for people and his intentionality with people. And so uh, we're gonna miss him here. Just as many of you, as many of you are gonna miss him. But you know, the thing about when you encounter people's presence, that they drop a little bit of seeds of themselves in you as you connect heart to heart. And so John lives on in all of us, because all of us have our stories, all of us have our moments that we'll forever remember. And so when we think about him, he's always ever present in our hearts and our minds, and never forgotten. And that's the power of story because through story, people live on. Through story, people are remembered and they're forever with us always. And so at this time, we're just gonna open up this space uh, for people to share about John and their moments that they had, had with him. And uh, I want to invite uh, uh, one of our members who uh, had a chance to speak with John every time she came to visit. Uh, Evangelist Grace, I'm going to invite you to come up and share about John. Give her a hand clap when she comes. Thank you. I'm preferring to stand on this side because I think most of the family's here, correct? And I know the church family's on the other side. But at any rate, um, John was a special friend of mine. When I, when I think of, of him, actually when I heard the news of, of his passing, I was actually quite devastated because we'd spent several days together. Now, I don't live here, my son lives here. And so when I come, I, I worked in DC for a number of years, and I'd come and visit my son. And every time I'd come, John would just make himself available. And uh, I remember the, the last two times that we were together, it was the, the day of the church picnic which was just a few weeks ago. And John had came and he brought a big, uh, three big cases of corn. And he had pretended like he prepared all this corn himself. <laughs> there, were, there were ears, I, I think he had like three different tins, you know, the big tins. Brother John knows about that. And there were like 12 ears of corn in each tin. So he bought like 36 ears of corn to the picnic. And he was saying, oh, it's, it's so good. And it really was very sweet and delicious. And we thoroughly enjoyed it, and we sit there, and he came over and sit with me, and we talked and chatted. And then the next day was actually Pastor Judy's birthday. So he also, he came to my table then, began to talk to me and my son, and I felt really honored. So I'm honored to be able to say something about him today. I just, I just love him with a great love, because really, um, he showed me such love when I come to town. He's really my son, closer to my son's age, but he spent time with this old lady whenever I come to town and made himself just so available and friendly. And I just appreciate that about him because he didn't have to do that. He would say, Grace, you know, I, I really love your people. I said, Brother John, which I knew he did. He said, yeah, I do. He said, well, let me ask you this. Shall I say, is it proper to say black or African American? I said, John, either one's fine. Just don't say color or Negro. <laughs> And, and we laughed about that. He, he always had a smile on his face. He was just so, so kind. That's what I loved about him. And I wrote down some things about him, if I can find it. Bear with me for just a moment. Um, John, he, and I'm going to repeat this because I'm, I'm saying it more than once, because he was all of that. He's loving, he's kind when I think about him. He had a really good, benevolent nature. 
and disposition. His personality, his disposition was always of love. Never of sadness, never of anything negative, always positive. He was kind and compassionate, and plus he was kind-hearted. He just really had a good heart. So I'm thinking maybe his mom, his dad, somebody in his family had to instill those virtues you know, into him for him to be that way. So you know, a lot of that comes from in, uh, legacy. You know, a lot of our family members are that way. We just kind of take on their attributes, their characteristics. So obviously, he saw that demonstrated in his own family. And so he passed that on to his friends and the ones he came in contact with. He was also extremely sympathetic. He had a real sympathetic heart. He was generous, always demonstrating random acts of kindness. Now, if I ask any of you in here, what did John do for you? And most of the time, you know, John, he would do random acts of kindness for many of us, but he, he would be anonymous. He wouldn't even say what he'd do, or something would happen, and something would get taken care of, and people would wonder, okay, who did that? Probably was John, because you think that you look around the room and you figure, who else would have done something like that but John? But he often demonstrated random acts of kindness to all of us. I know when I come to town, he would always, after service, he goes, okay, let's go get some dinner. And so we, you know, we gather a group of us together. We go out and have dinner and have service. And that's just one of the things he's done. Okay, moving right along, he had a warm sense of humor. As you can see demonstrated by the picture here, he was always smiling. And then he was considerate and very helpful to everyone. He had a mild manner about himself. He had sympathetic attitude toward others. And last but not least, was his willingness to do good always. That's what he's known for, for doing good. And that's why I celebrate him today with you. I honor the parents. I honor everyone that's here in his family. And I give you my heartfelt sympathy, my sincerest condolences to each and every one of you because we loved him greatly. And he's truly going to be missed. God bless each and every one of you. Amen. I'm going to invite uh, Jim. Jim to come down to share a couple words about John. Well, John was a pretty good old boy. <laughs> we spent quite a bit of time together, and uh, he's really going to be missed around here. You ask him to do anything, he's right there. And he wanted to go down to Texas with me. We were going to go. But uh, he'll be with me in spirit. But. Uh, that's about all I've got to say is he's sure going to be missed. He always sat on an aisle seat here. He was here every Sunday. Okay. Thank you, Jim. I invite uh, Sister Pat to come down and share. We love John around right here. she said about John because that's who John was and like her like she said when I heard the news I was like <laughs> I couldn't say nothing you, you, you know what I mean I, I just couldn't say nothing I just said no this didn't happen yeah. but I guess it did huh well anyway yeah John <laughs> He would always take the women out for supper after church. <laughs> <laughs> and he would ask questions, and, and I would say, oh, John, is, he's hungry for uh, the Word of God, the relationship with God, you know. Little did I know when I was talking to Pastor Judy, she said, oh, John could stand up and speak and teach and preach a sermon if he wanted to. I said, what? I said, he used to sit back and ask questions like he was 
I said, okay, so he was testing us to see if we was real, <laughs> see if we was true, you know, see if we really walked in love, you know what I mean? So, but anyway, Pastor Ivan left, hmm, I was, <laughs> I was teasing Quinn, I said, you know, Pastor Ivan left, and then old John, he just refused to go out to supper with us anymore. <laughs> but he would, you know, I'm just saying though, because the Pastor Ivan wasn't there, he didn't really want to go, but anyway, we love John, we miss him, and my heartfelt condolence goes out to his family also. Yeah. Love you guys. Yeah. Thank you. I'm going to invite uh, Elder Gwendy to come up and just share. She's one of, one of the crew that went out here with John. John was a gentleman. John was a gentleman. I just want to uh, give you my, my condolence, and yes, John was a gentle giant. He was so heartfelt, and what I loved about John is that he was hungry for God's word. We would have on school of ministry, all the different leadership programs and, and um, events we would have, John was just about at every last one of them. And that showed me how hungry he was and how thirsty he was seeking after God. And that just blessed us. And yes, he would be, could be just standing there and John would just come up in anybody conversation and just say something just off the chain. Or, you don't know what John be talking about, but he'll always make us laugh. And, he'll just, and he just felt so confident to just know that we always had him, and he was always welcomed in any scenario, in any atmosphere. John was just, he just felt like he was at home with us. And the one thing that I would love about John, because he told me one day, because John don't have no filter. He said it was ever <laughs> on his mind. And he said, um, oh, Gwen, are you losing weight? And I said, John, I love you so much. <laughs> I love you so much. I said, that is the sweetest thing you could say to a woman. So I will never forget that. Because John noticed that I had lost some weight and made it a point to let me know. So just for that, he will always be special in my heart. <laughs> yes. But so grateful to just know him as a brother in Christ, as a man of God. As someone that is so thought-provoking, so giving, so kind, so loving, just genuine, simply genuine, nothing phony about him. He was who he was, just authentic. And it's so rare to find a gentleman that like that. And so he is going to truly be missed. Thank you. I'm going to ask uh, Minister Sonia, and after that, uh, Minister Victor to come up and just share a couple words about John and their interaction with him. Um, it really hit me when I heard that John had passed. Um, he was a very, very intentional gentleman about getting to know me, um, where I was from. I'm from, I'm from Ghana, and he would ask all the questions that he needed to know, and wanted to know how I was doing at every point in time. He was at church, you know, wanted to know about my family. He just had this way of showing how much he cared. And he would always tell me, when are you gonna cook that meal you said was so delicious? And I'm so glad I got to cook it one time for him and he enjoyed it. And he was always looking forward to the next time I did. Um, and the last moment I remember spending with him was we were packing some things and it was late and we were all tired. And John took a moment to step me aside and he showed me this really funny video from the 80s and he knew I wouldn't understand um, because of where I'm from. So he took time to explain the history behind the video and he was going on and on and he made sure that I understood that it was funny. And I laughed, it was funny. <laughs> um, and so he, he was just meaning to take time to make sure that I had a smile even when we were tired or you know just to make sure I was okay. And, that's one thing I'll miss about John is he was very intentional about making sure I was okay. 
my sister was okay, and um, you'll forever be my heart, you'll forever be in our hearts, and um, I'll always look at his seat and see him there, and I know at the right time we'll all meet him in heaven, so God bless you all. So John, um, I think most of you will agree with me when I say that John was the undisputed king of puns. Yes. <laughs> I, he just had to come in, like, it was like second nature. I think there was uh, one time in one of those conferences, something we were talking about, something about nuns and something like that and scripture and whatever, and he said, well, wasn't Joshua the son of none? And it took a second. I was like, really? Really? <laughs> so he was that guy. And so we're going to miss that about him. John was, uh, he was comical. And he also did those accents that are uh, the Italian accent, like, hey, you owe me money. And, yeah. like, <laughs> and he did it so well. He was a prankster. Um, I remember several conversations with John. Uh, we would go to lunch or dinner. And, We'll talk about stuff, and he knew the word, he knew the scriptures, and he was a very sharp guy, you know. And um, one of the things I like about John is that what you see is what you get. John is John in church, outside of church, wherever it was, he's the same person. That's rare with a lot of people. Um, you know, there's no, there's no front with it. John was always helpful, he was dependable. Um, when he came, she mentioned about helping with moving stuff, and he would come, when you need him, and you stay until the job is done, and he he is going to be missed. Um, when I heard the news, it wasn't real. It, it, was, it, it wasn't real. Um, and then not seeing him at church, I'm like, huh. Then went on vacation, came back, and um, I think it was Wednesday. Um, I had to get something. I was shutting everything down, and then went into the closet over there to shut the lights off and then I saw the picture and then the reality of it started to hit and it's like he's really gone so I'm really gonna miss him um, and, and uh, yeah, I called the closest to the family. Thank you. I'm going to invite uh, Dr. Mark Hagen to come to share a few words about his experience with John. Come on Dr. Mark. If there's any friends or that are here that want to share, I want to invite you to come up after Dr. Mark. Hello, I'm um, with John's chiropractor, and I can honestly say when I first met John, I didn't like him. <laughs> and, uh, uh, he filled out his paperwork, and he had some back issues and stuff. And so anyway, I bring him up to the front desk, and my office is full of people, and new patient filling out a form and John says my back hurts worse and I can't see <laughs> so he had a dry sense of humor and if he didn't know he had a dry sense of humor he'd be kind of but he's kind of like a vine can't he grows on you and so a new patient was filling out paperwork walked out of the office <laughs> so the next time John comes in and sees me, and I don't know if you knew that he was claustrophobic. So I have a therapy room, and it, it's winter time, and the window's open, and the door to the therapy room's open, and he's got a fan in there. I said, well, whose fan is this? Well, he brought a fan with him to blow on him while I was getting his therapy, and this cold air is going through my office, and what in the hell is this window open for? And so, anyway, John was claustrophobic. Um, and uh, he was a cash pain patient, and I have a $60 fee, and I have a cash $40 fee. And $40 fee is supposed to be paid at time of service. Well, needless to say, I didn't realize he wasn't always paying me on time. But, and I, I uh, hear about uh, He's taking the ladies out after church for uh, dinner. And I've probably been out to 20 sometimes, and I always paid. He never offered to pay. So I know where all the money went. And uh, anyway, uh, I'm trying to 
and oh, Pastor Judy, I love Pastor Judy. And uh, he actually came here because of me. I don't know if you guys knew that. Uh, he was going to another church. He wasn't feeling uh, feeling it. So I said, "Well, the perfect church for you is Pastor Judy Center of Life," and so that's how he first started coming here. Well, then <clears throat> he really liked Pastor Judy. And so he goes, well, I'd like to just take her out to a movie or, you know, just up maybe to the pavilion for a show. And, and so um, I kept on encouraging him. Well, if you're going to get to her heart, you got to love the Lord first. And so he would send her scriptures and he'd always ask her out. And she's, I mean, she's not here today because she's going off to another missionary trip. And uh, so I just, I had to kind of tell him, John, I... I'm supposed to meet her in a whole bunch of different things, and she never shows up. She always changes her schedule. Josh knows that. And so I, but I kept on encouraging him to not give up on Pastor Judy. But now I see he was going after some of the other ladies in church. <laughs> but, um, anyway, uh, he had a really good sense of humor. Uh, I was really shocked. It's on the day before he died. And we talked about doing some missionary trips to Kenya together. Oh, he's definitely in heaven. But, uh, you know, well, you'll be missed. Thank you, Dr. Meyer. I want to open up this time if there are any other friends that are here that I want to share about John's impact on the life. Come on down, please. Only John can make you laugh and cry at the same time. Interesting how many women are here talking about that. And he was still single. Um, I knew John. for a lot of years and he but today I want to share with the family share with everyone what, what everybody's saying about John um, he was everybody's big brother my sons there's a young man whole family in Mitchell that the Craig family that John really took them under his wings Taught them how to wash windows. Taught them how to just, he was their friend. He, he ministered to them in a way that they didn't feel like they were being ministered to, but they were. And the one young man who can't be here has really been struggling for the last few years with opioid addiction, um, suicides, and John was always there at the hospital. He was there at the treatment center with him. He was there reaching out to him and, and being what Jesus tells us to be, which is friend and caring about him. And he is going to be very, very missed by all of the young men. <laughs> he taught my son how to file his, it's kind of a gross story, but I tell you anyway. <laughs> is how caring John was. Um, he, he had my son taking care of his baseball cards for him and sorting them, getting them all straightened out. And my son got sick one night all over his cards. <laughs> John's like, I said, John, I'm so sorry. Do you want him back? And he's like, no, 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 that's okay. <laughs> Then he just started having Jonathan like mow the lawn for him instead. Um, <laughs> Jonathan ran over his, his extension cord because he had an electric lawnmower. <laughs> and the extension cord. John never got mad, never didn't pay him, just always kept having him come back. So he was everybody's big brother and he is in this. We were all shocked when we heard the story and the news and I just wanted you to know that. What a fine young man, the son, the brother that you had, and how much you'll be missed.
Thank you. Anyone else want to come up and just share some stories about John and their experience? She do. She wants to talk about a conversation on the phone, and that's it. Go ahead and tell. It's funny. I'm Brother Tony. Um, me and John are kind of close. You know, we used to sit at the church and talk. John kind of talk. You know, he, he put his thought was outside of the box. Now, I remember one time John called me up one part of my tree trimmer. I said, hey, John, I have a tree trimmer now. And the shades just come on over. And um, you know, me and my wife were sitting there, let's get ready to have dinner. I'm like, well, John, you know, you want to, you know, you can have some dinner if you want some dinner. And John didn't turn on the meal. <laughs> you know, he's like, sure, well, I'll, I'll, I'll have some. You know, I had some microphone and cheese and some, uh, just took some stuff off the grill. And you know, John said, then he ate, and he's like, he's like, you want some more, John? We give you, you can have another plate. I said, you have another plate, please. <laughs> That's okay. And I don't think John didn't realize that I had called an ID on my cell phone. Because every time he would call me for something, he was go, uh, is this Little's Builds? Um, yeah, I, I like to order a three piece and <laughs> some extra macaroni and cheese. And like, right away, I went, Okay, John, what do you want? <laughs> now, and you now just at the picnic, we were sitting there talking, and he was, you know, he was telling me, hey man, you, you got maybe some macaroni and cheese. I'm like, yeah, I'll make some macaroni and cheese. And we never got around to getting that done for him. But, you know, he'll be missed. You know, and, you know we always used to sit and talk, and no one day we were sitting there talking. He's like, you know, when we get to heaven, we could probably ask Moses and Paul and all those guys what certain things meant. I said, oh, make sure they'd be there. We could even talk to them. And the person, he's sitting there asking them. <laughs> Thank you. Anyone else have any stories they want to come share about John and their memories? I wasn't sure I should share, but I think um, it's the perfect time. Um, John, for the longest time, and for real, nobody knows this is what between him and me, made me believe his name was Tim. <laughs> so for months, not a day, not a week, not even two or three months, but I'm telling you, for about six months, I thought his name was Tim. So I would go home, and he would say, oh, tell your husband how. Hi from Tim, and I said, okay. So I go home and I say, Christian, honey, Tim says hi. And you know, my husband doesn't know a lot of names, but he was like, I don't know, Tim. <laughs> yes, you know, when it comes to Bible study, it's Tim. So finally, he told me, well, Evelyn, I've been playing with you. My name is John. <laughs> All right. <laughs> so John was very comical, very funny. But what I love the most about John is that we didn't have to ask for anything. Mm -hmm. If he saw a need, yeah. he would just fit it up. And I still remember Pastor Judy's birthday last year. John came, and all the windows were dirty. And he didn't tell us anything. He just came and washed all the windows. So when we came in the next day, they were beautiful. It was just. Everything that John always did was for someone else. And I just wanted to share this with you and say thank you. Thank you. I do want to make mention that Pastor Judy wished she could be here, but she had a scheduled trip out of the country. And so she sends her condolences, condolences and well wishes to the friends and family of John. And uh, I know John was real special to her. And um, I know. I know she's going to listen to. I want to invite Ray to come up and share Ray as John's brother in law and a couple of other family members. All right. Michael. Um, my Uncle John taught me a lot in life. Um, Uh, 
lot of people are talking about his sense of humor. <laughs> um, when I was a kid, every year we would go to my grandma's for a Christmas vacation. And it always be really exciting when he was coming because there was always something he wanted to do physical. Like we sit around with grandma's quite a bit, but when he got there, we were always out doing something. And, uh, every year we'd play hide and seek, and uh, John would take it like way too far. <laughs> <laughs> he would. Uh, we would. He he'd find us in two minutes. Then he'd be like, "All right," and then just run off go hide, and me and my sister would be searching for him for, gosh, a, like an hour at some time. <laughs> and the only thing that gave him away was a little giggle that we would hear from wherever he was, and we would follow it. Uh, one time he was on my grandma's back porch, and kind of slanted like this, and he was holding his entire body weight up, <laughs> up above the door. And we walked through there several times, not thinking to look up, but he was up there. I walked out there, and I like, <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> So the uh, last time I can remember playing with him at a uh, hide and seek with him was uh, <laughs> pretty crazy, because uh, be, we looked for him for two hours. He didn't get there till about six o'clock that night. And eventually, uh, my sister and I gave up, got our pajamas on, brushed our teeth, and uh, went to bed. And I just laid there thinking, I'm like, is nobody gonna worry about the fact that John's just missing right now? <laughs> uh, so my grandma had these two pantries in her basement, and uh, one of them had like canned food in it, and, like boxes of macaroni and cheese, and all this stuff, and the other one had bunch of clothing in it and everything. And, uh, we searched that other pantry, high and low, there's a closet in there, we looked through everything. And we went to the pantry with all the canned food, looked, and there's really no way he can hide in here. So when I was laying in bed that night, I walked back down, I'm like, he's got to be in there, that's the only place we can go. <laughs> and everybody's saying he's claustrophobic. Well, I don't know if he fell asleep <laughs> or if he passed out. <laughs> But he had hidden on the top shelf, laid down, stacked cans up to the ceiling in front of himself. And the thing that gave him away was I heard him snoring. Uh, so I moved the cans and I just saw his face there. And then I didn't know what to do, so I just left him there. <laughs> Ten years old, I was just like, I don't know if I should wake him up. I tried. A little luck. But, uh, <laughs> He was always a kid at heart, and, uh, but he also took his responsibilities seriously. And uh, that's something that he taught me that I will take with me for the rest of my life and try to mirror that myself. Thank you. I must be old school because I had to write some stuff down. <laughs> Hi everyone, I'm uh, Ray Gush. This could be hard for me. I'm John's brother-in-law. I want to thank all of you personally for coming out today and to celebrate John's life. Um, and he had a great life, uh, you know. Really hurt today, really hit home. And we were putting all the things out there that he had done in his life. Because he done a lot, he had done a lot of things that a lot of folks never had the opportunity to do. Space camp, I mean, Where'd that come from? <laughs> um, and, you know, he took a trip to Thailand. Um, and, and just crazy things like that that, that John did. And I'm going to share some personal stories as well. Um, first thing, you know, everybody 
mention how big of a prankster John was. I'll tell you, he just pulled off the biggest prank, leaving myself <laughs> and his sister to deal with his estate. <laughs> Um, the, the, the hills that we had to climb, um, just to get here, we didn't know any of his friends, we didn't know any of his acquaintances, he lived four, four hours away. And, uh, so, you know, John, John did his thing out here. And, you know, I, I'm so glad, and by the way, Doc, if he owes you money, you need to see me. Because <laughs> we'll be handling this estate, so. But, the, the other, so, you know, just the biggest prank, just leaving, leaving us for this to deal with. And you, you guys have probably seen the bumper sticker out there, he who dies with the most toys wins. John definitely won that. Um, I know that uh, some of you know that uh, John liked to uh, purchase things and sell them and, and so on. Yeah, he did. <laughs> Big time. And, you know, a lot of you have mentioned that he liked to disguise his, his voice. He called me up. Hey, this is Tony. I've got your brother-in-law. If you don't give me a thousand dollars, throw him in the river with concrete shoes. <laughs> John and I connected through bicycling. John and I rode portions of rag drive for the last five years. And so we put a lot of miles on a bicycle. And we did it this year. But the first year that we did this, we were riding my wife, Bridget, dropped us off in Eldora, Iowa. And we were riding to Cedar Falls, Iowa. So it was myself, a friend of my son's, Jack, and John. And John got on his bike. I never seen him again. We got to the first town. I texted him. I called him. No John. We get to the second town. Same thing. No John. We get to the third town, and so on and so on. No John. No, no text back, no phone call, so on. This, and, and for, I, I'm a pretty, pretty fast rider. I ride between 14 and 16 miles an hour. So, you know, that, that route, um, it was probably about seven hours on a bike, because when you ride on rag drive, you have to stop in every town, walk your bike through town, and so on. So we get there, seven hours later, Jack I was riding with, I'm like, well, let's go grab something to eat, and maybe John will show up. Still no John. So we pedal over to Jack's apartment, which is a couple miles away from where we had come into Cedar Falls at the University of Northern Iowa. And we showered, called my mom because mom, my mom was going to pick me up, pick us up, and because you had to have somebody drop you off, and you had to have somebody pick you up on the other end. Called her and said, Mom, I haven't seen John all day long. She said, aren't you worried? I said, I wasn't until you said something. <laughs> so, Two and a half hours later, we get a phone call from some strange phone number. Hey, this is John, where you at? Well, John, we've been done two and a half hours. Oh, you have not. <laughs> so I said, yeah, we have. We're, and I said, we'll meet you at the McDonald's in Cedar Falls, Iowa. So we get there. And John looked like a train had run him over. <laughs> He had bought these new biking shoes that your feet click into the pedals. Well, the first town we came into, he forgot to unclick. Oh. Went down and he had road rash all over him. So he spent a little bit of time in the first aid tent for that day. 
So, and, and then I was talking to a couple of his buddies here, and he made up some other story where that road rash after he came back <laughs> home here <laughs> came from. John had a special rel relationship, like many of you did, with him, with all of the family members. Everybody he had a special relationship with. Bridget and I and our family had the pleasure of having John in our house three times this year. And that was unlike John. We would, I would see him every July for rag grind for a few days. But he came back the last week of July. We rode a few days on rag grind. <coughs> then he uh, went home, came back the second week of August for my son's wedding. Then he came back Labor Day weekend left our house, John and I and my granddaughter went out to eat on Labor Day, died that following Friday. So we had a lot of time with John this year, which we usually did. That weekend he came back on Labor Day, those of you who know John, I kind of like to go to garage sales, Goodwill, all these places. Well, there was a three county garage sale in Iowa. So I went with John, and the things that I purchased wouldn't even take the top, up the top of this pedestal. John left with a car load. <laughs> and he was still in his car after he had passed. Those of you who knew John knew he liked to eat. When we'd ride on Rag Ride, he couldn't—he usually couldn't keep up with me because every little town he had to stop and get something to eat. <laughs> when he came back on this year, he was disappointed. We didn't make a roast for him because he wanted that home cooked meal. He didn't—he didn't—he didn't, he didn't do that at home. So, when he came back for my son's wedding, we made him that roast, potatoes, carrots, he ate the whole thing. <laughs> the other thing that John liked, and you, you guys may not be familiar with this, Major, or there's a, there was a franchise in Iowa called Major. All of it, all this is, loose meat, ground beef. And we, uh, he had the pleasure of uh, doing that twice when we were on Rag Ride this year, going to that, that franchise. And then for my son's uh, wedding, we served maid rides. He took a batch of that home with him. <laughs> and John, like I said, liked to go to garage sales, flea markets, anywhere where he felt he could get a deal. It was fun watching him negotiate. I would watch him negotiate a deal, and he'd get a couple donuts thrown in. <laughs> Couple waters, <laughs> whatever. If they were eating something, he was negotiating that in the deal. <laughs> the other thing, and, and you guys may not be aware of this, but John was kind of a pyro. He'd come back to Iowa every year, and he would have a carload of fireworks, and. That's great, but John would light one, and before that one even went off, he was lighting another one. <laughs> Didn't even really watch the first one. John had the biggest smile, as you can see from the photo there. It's just infectious. And I always told 
everybody that I know, John looked a lot like Dale Earnhardt Jr. <laughs> I, and especially about five years ago, he, he I, I swear he looked so much like Dale Earnhardt Jr. And I, I heard this loud and clear today too. John would give the shirt off his back to anyone, anybody in need. I would, I, I seen a lot of that. And as Bridget and I have handled as a state, city this size, just amazed, I, I'm just amazed at how many lives he touched. And how many people thought so much of John? I'm going to miss this guy. And next year on Rag Drive, I took John's bike. I'm going to ride it in his memory. And if anyone would like to join me, I'd, I'd feel honored to have John, or it, to ride with me. South Dakota, Iowa's never going to be the same without this guy. John, rest in peace. I know you're with the Lord. Love you, man. You will be missed by all. I appreciate the opportunity to celebrate John's life. And the stories were just great that, that you guys shared. And he, he'll live on. Somebody mentioned this earlier. He's in our heart. He's there. Touched so many people. Thanks for coming out today. You know, the key to life is when you take the moments that we're given, and we use them wisely. So oftentimes in life, we always think we're gonna get the next moment. But the truth of the matter is that tomorrow's not promised, and all we have is the present to make an impact on the people that God places before us to take the time. And in today's society, we get so busy that we miss out on the opportunity just to be that light, to be that encouragement, to be that joy. But John knew the value of the moment, which is pretty evident in the stories uh, that were shared here today and by the lives that he touched. So let us remember that. We're going to have this closing song, and then I'll come back and do a closing prayer. And we invite everyone to stay after for refreshments and just to uh, share in these moments that we have with John, with each other.
sing that line. Lord, I need you. Oh, I need you. Every hour I need you. My one defense, my righteousness, oh God. Lord, we just thank you for this time that we were able to come together to remember our brother, our friend, our uncle that impacted so many lives with the time that he was given. And Lord, we thank you for the gift and the joy that he was and the light that he is. And God, we thank you for a race well run. God, we thank you for the race that was run well, God, by him. Lord, we know that we wish we'd have more time, but Lord, we thank you that we'll have eternity because we know that he's with you. So God, I ask right now for us that are left here, his family and his friends, God, for the grace strength, the joy while we wait for that great reunion when we make our transition to heaven. God, give us the strength. Give our hurting hearts hope. God, give us that peace that surpasses all understanding. That quiets the fear. That quiets the worry. That quiets the sadness. God, give us that peace that surpasses all understanding. And let it guard our hearts until that day that we're reunited. And God, just like John had that joy, God, give us that joy. Let it be multiplied upon us today because you said in your word that the joy of the Lord is our strength. God, I pray for that strength to be released upon all of us today. For that strength to make it today and the next day and the next day as we go forward. So God, we thank you for this time again that we can remember our dear brother John, the beloved by you. We ask all these things in the matchless name of Jesus. Amen. God bless you and thank you again for coming out to celebrate such a great man. Please stay after refer for refreshments. God bless you. Service. Uh, we'll let, we'll let after, after, uh, yeah, after. Uh, after.